Okay, so that melody was from Jesus Priceless Treasure, uh, hymn number 743 in the Lutheran service book. Maybe more familiar in some ways, um, it's an old Lutheran hymn. This one, we're going back a couple centuries and worshiping the word this time to, this comes from the 17th century. Um, originally, the text was by a guy named Johann Frank, and the tune is a guy made by name Johann Kruger, but it's probably most famous for a reason by a different Johann, Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, a century later, Bach used this to create a motet um, of his works. It's uh, the number is BWV 227, um, and it's really beautiful. I highly recommend checking that out. I've got a link to there's a version by the Netherlands Bach Society um, that is really great. So there's a, be a link in the description. You can take a look at that and. So, the original German of this was Jesu meine Freude. Uh, you can excuse my bad German because I do not speak German, but um, yeah, which translates to Jesus my joy. The English translation they changed around a little bit because what happens with translation, the words don't always fit. The English translation, the start of it is Jesus priceless treasure, fount of purest pleasure, truest friend to me. Um, that's how it begins. and But the same basic idea is stays constant through both. And this was originally used in funeral services. And it's a great for that because it's a reminder, even though we're talking about the subject of death and pain and loss, that we still have Jesus as our joy. And we remember this, and because of Jesus, we have eternal life. That Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Um, he that believes in me, even though he dies, yet he shall live. And we hold on to that hope and that promise. Um, so it's a really good reminder of that and a verse that fits really well with this theme um, in this hymn is a couple verses here. Actually, it's a passage from 1 Peter chapter 1. I'll read with you verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the test of genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be revealed, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So with Jesus, we have this inexpressible joy, though we do not see him through faith in the Holy Spirit, we have this joy that we know what he has in store for us. So even this is why this hymn is a great reminder during funerals or when we see death all around us, that we know what we have in Jesus, our source of joy, our fount of purest pleasure, who gives us eternal life. And the last verse of this hymn is really great here. It says, verse 6, Hence all fear and sadness, for the Lord of gladness, Jesus enters in. Those who love the Father, though the storms may gather, shall have peace within. Yea, whatever I here must bear, 
Thou art still my purest pleasure, Jesus, priceless treasure. So that's a great reminder of the inexpressible joy that we have in Jesus. And this hymn is a great reminder of that. And that's what I'm going to leave you guys. Tune in for our next Worship of the Word. Thanks. Thank you.